and welcome to one medicine today i'll discuss about a disease called as haley haley disease haley haley disease is also called as familial benign chronic pemphigus it is a type of an immunobullous uh, disorder or uh, it is also called as familial benign chronic pemphigus it is called so because of the clinical and histopathological resemblance to the pemphigus group of disorders that we know and it is named after Howard and Hugh Haley in 1939 they uh, described this condition that's why it's named after these two brothers it's an autosomal dominant condition and uh, in 70% of the patients we see that there is family history which is present uh, both females and males are equally affected and the disease starts the third decade of life that's about introduction about the uh, haley haley uh, disease etiology and pathogenesis so there is this uh, heterozygous mutation in this gene called as atp2c1 gene which is located on the chromosome 3q2124 in this location there is this gene called as atp2c1 which is present this codes for the spca1 protein this helps in the influx of calcium inside the golgi apparatus of the cell so there will be influx of calcium happening because of this particular protein which is present and this calcium will help in maintaining the cell homeostasis to maintain cell homeostasis this calcium gradient has to be there also calcium is involved in epidermal differentiation prophylaxis processing and lipid secretion so we know that there is the keratinocytes so the epidermis undergo differentiation and they will be uh, proliferating uh, frequently and they will be desquamating also and that helps in maintaining homeostasis of the epidermis and calcium gradient is very much required for that process and also we know that filaggrin uh, granules the keratohyalin granules are present in the stratum granulosum and uh, they also have got odland bodies present and uh, these odland bodies help in secretion of the lipids which is seen in the stratum corneum so these odland bodies which are present in the stratum granulosum so the layers we have stratum basale layer from above downwards we have stratum basale stratum spinosum stratum granulosum and then we have st stratum corneum and in some places like palms and soles we also have a intermediate layer here called a stratum lucidum right so the keratohyalin granules and the odland bodies present here so if you are talking about the odland bodies odland bodies will be present in the stratum granulosum and upper layers of the stratum spinosum will have this uh, odland bodies and these odland bodies will have to be secreted outside the cell and they will come and lie in between the keratinocytes in between the corneocytes to be specific when you are talking about stratum corneum so these odland bodies will come and occupy by in between the corneocytes and that is required for the lipid layer formation of the epidermis and that lipid layer formation is very important because it forms a barrier and also for hydration of the skin for preventing trans epidermal water loss that is very important and also we have the keratohyalin uh, granules also which are present in the stratum granulosum keratohyalin granules will have this prophylaxis filaggrin molecules right and they are also important in forming the cornified envelope so for maintaining the epidermis the health of the epidermis or the proper functioning of the epidermis all of these factors are important and calcium homeostasis for this is very important for all these processes like epidermal differentiation prophylaxis processing lipid secretion to take place uh, calcium homeostasis is very important and here that is what is altered okay so if there is impaired spca1 there will be impaired desmosome adherence also so it, it is also just said that we also know that keratinocytes are attached to each other by something called as desmosomes so desmosomes are present in between the cells and the keratinocytes maintain the shape integrity structure because of the desmosomes present so this impaired spca1 also will cause um, destruction of these uh, desmosomes so the keratinocyte adherence also will be lost that is why we see a uh, bullae here or the vesicle that we see here is because of that okay the blisters that we see is because of these particular reasons right that's about the pathogenesis then coming to the predisposing factors of haley haley disease it is the sunlight it can aggravate the disease heat yeast infection bacterial infections it can also happen spontaneously and friction also can cause friction induced blisters most commonly we see in epidermolysis bullosa right same uh, friction induced blisters can also happen in uh, haley haley disease so it is the sunlight heat yeast infection bacterial infection spontaneously it can happen and the friction which can trigger the disease clinically we see vesicles on bullae and the site is characteristic here that is groin and the axilla the flexures of what is affected here okay other areas like perianal area genital area peri umbilical area nape and sides of the neck can also be affected so peri umbilical area is also affected in this and the vesicles will appear on apparently normal skin they will enlarge to form flaccid bullae and positive nikolsky sign also is present okay shearing pores applied will then uh, separate the epidermis from the dermis that is also present here if the blister is eroded uh, the if the blister is gone then the, the then you will see an eroded base uh, that will uh, produce serum and then crusting will take place later lesion spreads peripherally with a dry center also 
so these are the this is these are the lesions in the axilla if you can see uh, the tiny vesicles present and they are eroded friction is more in uh, intertrigenous areas right so there's erosion also very frequently that take place and this is a red uh, erosions that are left behind so familial disease family history again will be positive the lesions can have circinate borders there will be painful fissures sometimes malodorous vegetative plaques like pemphigus vegetans also can be seen uh, nails will have white bands asymptomatic white bands can be present on the nails then mucosa can also be affected sometimes but not very frequently palma pits can be seen so these are the other associations that can be present okay so here you can see the white bands in the nail which are there and this is the genital area which is affected again some atypical forms are we have the segmental form segmental type 1 and type 2 forms hyperkeratotic if there's keratotic lesions then that's called keratotic hyperkeratotic form if there's lichenified lichen planus like uh, plaques if they are formed then it is lichenified varicose we have got a papilla variant papilla vesicular and vesicular pustula variant these are the different uh, variants of uh, haley haley disease which can have different presentations as well in histopathology a lacuna or a small suprabasal separation is found okay just above the epidermis there will be a separation the dermal papilla which is lined by a single layer of basal cells will go into the if there's a lacuna this is dermal papilla which is lined by a single layer of basal cells which will go and protrude inside the lacuna right and this downward proliferation of the epidermis also which take place here and the separation of the keratinocytes will be as i told you there's destruction of the desmosomes which will connect the keratinocytes that the, the, and now here we see that the separation of keratinocytes which will give a, a histopathological characteristic appearance is dilapidated brick wall appearance because of the separation that is most importantly seen and like in darius disease cob prawns can be seen in the granulosum these are nothing but a, a, Discaratotic keratinocytes, which are present, okay, Th those can be seen. Th th that is the abnormal keratinocytes which are deposited like that in the stratum granulosum uh, can also be seen. They'll be longitudinally present like this, okay, they uh, can be seen. Hyperkeratosis above the vesicles can be present. Dermis can have lymphocytic infiltrate. Differential diagnosis include that the lesions can look like impetigo, which is infection. Uh, then it can look like tinea sarsineta. It can also look like Darius disease. Darius disease again is another. Uh, Uh, cantholytic disorder which uh, is very similar to this but um, the the area of distribution would be in the seborrheic areas in darius disease and the keratotic lesions also would be seen right so little difference is there but it can mimic sometimes um, haley haley disease pemphigus vegetans because if the vegetating lesions are present in the axilla and groin it commonly mimics uh, pemphigus vegetans but pemphigus vegetans won't have family history as much as uh, 70% family history won't be present in um, pemphigus vegetans that can help us in di di differentiating tinea crudus and intertrigo if they scented clearing and peripheral extension of the lesions then you can think about this and this also happens in the groins right but the thing is itching would be more prominently present and uh, uh, other sides would be affected and that that would again uh, it's an infection right all the other uh, features of infection would be present in uh, these particular conditions cause and prognosis exacerbations and remissions will be present and uh, but it decreases with age as the age increases the incidence of the disease will come down for treatment you can give tetracycline 2 g daily followed by 500 mg maintenance dose can be given minocycline penicillin erythromycin also can be tried topical intralesional systemic steroids have been tried in acute cases dapsone in refractory cases 100 mg per day can be tried topical tacrolimus tacalcitol calcitriol pua therapy also is tried if the skin does not heal at all you can go for split thickness skin graft bimaglaser co2 laser which have been again uh, tried in this condition tetracycline is what is uh, commonly tried initially uh, for treating haley haley disease antibiotics are tried first and then if that does not reduce you go for steroids if that does not help then you go for dapsone Uh, after monitoring of the patient, you go for dapsone. You can't just start dapsone on any patient. You have to monitor all the blood parameters and then start the patient on dapsone as well. That's about the treatment of Haley Haley disease.